Another episode of So You Want to Start a Business. If you uh, haven't watched part one and part two, go back and watch those of KO. Here comes part three for you hitting at you. Part four coming in tomorrow. Make sure you like, subscribe, and be ready for these. Great content. And I and going on in some like some of the videos that I've done at first, you know, I went I went to college and did IT. Yeah. And I came out and, and did that and then met somebody online and decided to move to Wisconsin <laughs> because she was just out of high school and I didn't want to, you know, her to be homesick. So I move up here. I just quit my job. I just quit my job and moved up here with no job at all. And just started cold calling pretty much at that yeah. point, you know, and, and then I got to get a job, but then I get a family, you know, and th my path at this point is one of those, uh, one, starting a job scares the sh yeah. out of me, you know, it, but it's one of the things that I've always wanted to do, you know, especially, you know, you get the idea of you want to be your own boss and be the, the in charge of your own destiny, I guess you could say. So I had so many years where I I wanted to do stuff. I did MLM, you know, like uh, Amway and stuff like that. To try to do something on the side to make some extra sure, money. Side hustle. Uh, but but you're always kind of like what you said. Uh, I was always scared of always wanting to have not having that paycheck and that you know in the background as something you could depend yeah. on, especially with kids and stuff like that. And to be able to take the leap, uh, you know, kind of like yep. Steve Harvey always says, of you, you, you got to take a leap at some point. Right. So that's one of the things now is my kids are are fifteen and eighteen. Wow. And and they they found girls, <laughs> so, so they're not at the house very often anymore. They don't need daddy anymore to where, you know, it's it's my time to kind of went from uh, uh, concentrating on the family and making sure that they're okay to, you know, and not really thinking about Jamie, but now it's time to think about the things that I wanted to do, you yep. know, the things that I didn't do in, because of a relationship and stuff like that uh, to where now I can, I can kind of like, like myself a little bit, <laughs> you know, because we were always brought up and the way my dad was always was, you know, you don't worry about yourself. You worry about your family and, and everything yeah. else. And I think that that's part of the the way that I was really raised at that point and, and my mentality and stuff. Uh, so with that, thinking of relationships, I, I started to do stuff before whenever I was in relationships and it seems like that, at least for me, it was hard because you take away that that personal time uh, of a relationship. And it seems like, okay, who's more important? You know, the job, the business, because it's going to take that extra time. It's, you don't have a nine to five no right. more. You know, I know that with, with you and Mel at that point where you all are, you both seem to have the same goals, the same you know, the same work ethic, the, the same discipline and stuff. How much has that helped you as far as, especially now, you know, you, we've seen in your YouTube videos of the day in the life of a bodybuilder, you know, running a gym and stuff like that. You, you get to see that you don't have a constant schedule that much anymore. You know, you have to be able to adjust and stuff like that. How How is it that, you know, she has her her uh, clients too, and you have yours to be able to to balance that part of getting your all schedules together and still being able to have that that type of relationship that you know us is bring brought up as Christians and stuff like that you know of of being able to have that quality time together uh, to have that type of connection. So I'll have to I'll we'll have to go back a little bit, Jamie, because uh, you know I got divorced. I had, I had four stepkids. Uh, I was married to a woman. So when I first started my personal training business, I went to her and I said, um, 
you know, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Now, at the time, my ex-wife was a, um, she worked at a hair salon, so she was a beautician. So her and I, about around the same time, I started my personal training business, and then just a few years later, she started a salon that I, I mean, I helped her uh, get that up and running. So we both were self-employed. And again, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, you're investing in yourself and you're hoping, you know, this works out. Um, now, if we fast forward, uh, I was divorced in 2012, uh, still had my business. But at that time, I'd started to uh, I started a CrossFit gym, um, had a I had a guy that was, you know, telling me I needed to do this. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll just say this right now. I think CrossFit's fine for certain people, but for the majority, I think it's the most idiotic bullshit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> uh, and I say that because it's just randomized crap all the time. And I'm not, you know, I know people listen to this. Well, I do CrossFit. Well, good for you. If that's what you like doing, you go right ahead. It's, it's okay. Mm-hmm. But if I'm specifically doing something, if you call me and you said, Kale, I need a program for me. Here's my issues. Here's my problems. You're going to get a program that's specifically for you for what your goals are. That's not CrossFit. Because you've got 20 people in there. They're all doing the same thing. So you're going to tell me all 20 people want the exact same thing. No. It's very well right. marketed. Uh, And the guy that talked me into doing this, it, I could have probably done this just my own gym, but that CrossFit name kind of did bring (coughs) people over. The more I investigated it, you know, it was uh, basically because they knew they could get me as a coach and a trainer cheaper than they could if they personal Mm -hmm. trained with me. And I was okay with that. Uh, so I started the gym right after I got divorced. And again, it was, uh, nobody really talks about this, but people that go through a divorce, I have tons of feelings for them because you're lost for a couple of years. Like you're trying to redefine oh, yeah. yourself. You're trying to find yourself again. You don't really know who you are. You've, you know, in my case, I was used to having, you know, four step kids around Mm -hmm. and you couldn't have told me they were any different. As a matter of fact, you know, my stepson now, me and him still have a great relationship. Uh, I've got grandbabies, you know, I go see them. I do everything I can for him. And uh, we still have a great relationship. But at that time I started the, again, another huge leap. I had a opportunity with 1,800 square feet, that's all it is. And I put a gym in. I, I put a gym back in uh, this little area. It was nothing but cinder block. And I uh, put, you know, put my mats down, did all this stuff. Started having people come in. So I kept doing personal training, but I was also doing, you know, this little, you know, little CrossFit gig. After a year, I dropped the CrossFit name because it's a waste you're mm-hmm. established you're paying them four thousand dollars a year to use their name you don't need it in a town like this so i dropped that <laughs> and it just became dark side athletics uh, a lot of people ask me why the name dark side because i do things different i'm not by the book mm-hmm. um i don't believe in it i think we've got probably 50 percent of our strength and conditioning coaches in this, in America, that don't have a damn clue what they're doing. The book doesn't tell them what to do. So exactly. I see a lot of wrongs. Uh, so my dark side athletics came from my training's a little bit more on the, on the dark side. It's stuff that people don't usually see. It's, you know, different stuff. So the name was kind of perfect. Uh, especially considering I was kind of in a dark place at that time. Going through that divorce, didn't really know what uh, what to expect. I didn't really know what to do. 
if you want the truth. And I don't mind that because mm-hmm. I'm usually a guy that, you know, seems like he has it together. But when you go through that, I don't care who tells you. They're lying to you if they tell you it doesn't take some doing. Right after that. Oh, yeah. Um, Mel got divorced. So <clears throat> she starts coming over, and I'm training her. And she's a physical therapist. She's 25 years PT. Well, that intrigues me, you know, because she knows more, you know, about anatomy than I'll ever know. She knows, you know, you know, more about the body and how things work. And so her and I are a really good team together. Uh, Now getting back to how Mel does stuff. So Mel was working at the clinic. And I said, look, you'll come over and you'll start doing personal training. Within a year, you'll quit the clinic. And she's used to drawing a check, what you said a minute ago. What's the scary part? Hey, oh, yeah. I don't have a check. I'm not I'm not getting that steady check every week. How do I make my money? So, number one, you know, when she got divorced, she became a single mother that's in shape and knew just about everybody in town because she'd been their physical therapist at one time. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And women, you know, look to her as like she's this strong female. And I'm like, I can't. I, I can't even do anything with that. I mean, you, you're such a sale for doing, just being you. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, I got to get out here, lie, steal, and cheat to get clients. Here, you just got to show up. <laughs> so she starts, and about a year in, she starts dropping her hours at the clinic. And then this year, I think she might be working 10 10 hours a week, something like that, at the clinic. And the rest of her time is at the gym where she just has personal clients and athletes. Uh, I mean, we just, it's a, the crazy schedule. I mean, we're in bed every night by 7.30, 8 o'clock. And then we're up, you know, at 4 o'clock. And then we're at the yep. gym at 5 o'clock. So between 5 o'clock and 8 a.m., her and I have done more work than most people will for most of the day. I mean, Oh yeah. <laughs> um, you know, this morning I trained, you know, I had 15 athletes at six o'clock and then I had clients all the way from, um, seven o'clock every 30 minutes all the way to about 12 o'clock today. So it stays pretty busy. And Bell did the same. So our schedule's crazy. Um, when it kind of comes to that, because you don't really know, you might just get a phone call and somebody cancels. You know, they're sick. They don't feel good. Well, yep. there goes X amount of money. You don't get yep. paid for that. Uh, you know, we have a cancellation policy, you know, to where if somebody just doesn't show up, then they get charged. But that just doesn't really happen. I mean, most people, you know, let us know, uh, you know, what's going on and stuff. But it's uh, Mel and I are both from rural areas. So when I go see her family, when we go down and do stuff, I love it because it's almost like my family. I mean, they're just such a great group of people, uh, old country folk, and it's fantastic. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of people that come from the city, and I really feel bad for them because you and I grew up in that old country way oh, and yeah. to me there's not a better way like i really w- the values are there oh man it's just it's that's so many values that are missing in in society today exactly. that cause it to go to crap are the ones that we learn at, growing exactly. up exactly um you know and i said earlier i never really knew i was poor because you had people that loved you you had people that cared about you enough to slap you upside the head if you knew his manners. Because mm-hmm. they knew if you and I go out into the world and we're a yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, thank you, please, you get a lot farther in life than you do if oh, you're yeah. like, yeah, bro, 
Oh, what, bro? What, what, what? Drives me nuts. Is that? And the amount of respect that you pay for each exactly. other. That that's that's my big thing that I've tried to teach my kids yeah. is the uh, and it's always been a thing that's kind of been hard for me to be around people and that's why I guess I don't like to be around people a lot of times sometimes is because the amount of respect you know I was brought up that you show respect to the person and, and you let them kind of decide whether they deserve any more of it or most not. definitely most definitely. And I've, and, but it's something that you got to earn to where if I try to work my butt off for you to, to spend my time to do stuff for you, and then you don't show any respect towards me, it's just like you think you deserve it. Yeah. Then that's whenever it ch kind of chips my ass, I guess you could say <laughs> at that point. And that person no longer really, I don't respect that person, you know. Well, it's, you know, I always, uh, I always tell everybody that my greatest asset is I accept people for who they are. But mm -hmm. what you just said, you know, if somebody's an asshole, they're an asshole. There's no, mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I don't have time for people that I feel like are disrespectful. So with my kids, especially my males, uh, every one of them, if I ask them a question, it better be a yes, sir. Or no, sir. Oh, yeah. I tell them coming in or not, I find. Something